Good morning. Welcome, welcome. Hi there. Um, let's start. Um, today's gospel is Mark. Uh, where are we? Mark twelve twenty eight to thirty four. Um, Jesus has addressed the questions of um, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Herodians, and um, and now he is going to be approached by um, by one of the scribes. So let's. Um, Let's start with the Holy Spirit prayer, and then let's hear what he has to say um, to probably the, the most important question that posed. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> Mark 12, 28. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and besides him, there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding, with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. Okay, a <clears throat> couple of different tangents. Um, first, who are the scribes? The scribes um, are the scholars. They are the ones who literally are supposed to know every dot, every cross T, every period, every everything in the scripture. That is their job. So this scribe knows scripture well. One of the problems with the devout Jews, devout being a loosely used term, the devout Jews of the time was that they were very legalistic. They, there's over 600 laws in the Old Testament and they knew them, but they didn't understand that um, the laws about which pot or pan to use were not nearly as important as the law to love your neighbor. Um, they didn't prioritize and they were like tied up in knots over following all these laws, um, but they couldn't, they couldn't come up with a true plan of life for what it looks like to live in holiness. Um, and if you, we're probably gonna get to this, but, but if you skip down a few verses to verse 38, Jesus is denouncing the scribes. He, as he taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive greater condemnation. So he's saying all this sanctimoniousness, this is, this is not impressive. Um, <clears throat> what is impressive, okay? Well, what God really wants is is summed up in that um, in those short commandments. So he begins with the the Shema from Deuteronomy. Jesus is quoting it. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this: You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So let's take a little bit of a novel look at this. We tend, when we read this, and we've read it before, we zero in on loving our neighbor. And I want to look at loving ourselves. Um, because I don't think we talk about it a lot. Because it sounds sort of, um, what's the word? It sounds like we're being a little bit narcissistic um, or selfish um, 
to love ourselves. But this is part of the great commandment, to love ourselves. So let's go back two days to the fact that we are images of God. Do you look in the mirror and can you see the image of God in your face? Can you see yourself the way God sees you? Because you are commanded to do that. And, um, and that command comes from a place that understands that love isn't just a feeling. That love is a choice and it's an action. We choose to love God. God first chose to love us. And then we choose to love others. But in the middle there, he says, love yourself. So, so what does that mean? All right, in, in um, Pope Benedict's first encyclical, Deus Caritas, so God is love. Um, he said, if I have no contact with God in my life, then I cannot see in the other anything more than the other. And I am incapable of seeing in him the image of God. Okay, so that's addressing seeing God in your neighbor. But the same applies to seeing God in yourself. The better you know God, the better you're going to be able to recognize God God's image, God's working in your life, you're going to be able to recognize yourself and say, yeah, God is there and God loves me and I can receive that love. And from receiving that love, I can love myself and I can love my neighbor. And so that's the question. Can you see in yourself the image of God? And can you recognize how loved you are by God so that you can receive that love and love yourself well and love your neighbor well? Um, so the scribes had extensive book knowledge, right? And, and, and they didn't understand how to prioritize. They didn't understand um, that this part, this part about loving yourself, loving God, loving yourself, and then loving your neighbor as God loves your neighbor, that that was the crux of all of it. And that that was way more important than what to eat and what not to eat. Um, so they didn't understand that. And Jesus says, love is a verb, choose it. And that's the most important commandment. But then if something interesting happens, right? Um, at the end, when the scribe says, oh, you nailed it. Like, that is just brilliant. You clearly know what you're talking about. You know the scriptures. You understand them. And not only that, like, you can, you can see which one is most important. And Jesus looks at this scribe with love. <clears throat> and, and he says, you're almost there. Like, you're smart. And you know God with your intellect. Like, you get it, and you are not far from the kingdom of God. That is so exciting. He did not say, however, oh, you get it. You're living in the kingdom of God here on earth, which is what he wants for us. Why? Because love is a verb, and because this man needs to understand it with his intellect, but then he needs to live it. He needs to love his neighbor as himself the way that God loves them, the way that God loves him, the way that God loves his neighbor. He needs to do the thing in order to truly be living in the kingdom of God. Um, and that's important. That's super important because, you know, he, Jesus says, love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. So what is that? Your heart, your soul, your knowing, your intellect, and your whole body, your strength, everything that you can bring physically to the world. Love your God with all of it. So it's not enough to just understand in your head. You have to incorporate it into your heart. You have to commune with God in your soul. And then you have to do the thing. Um, and so 
I think it's important today to prop open our Bibles and to read this passage and ask ourselves not to skip over the part where you're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself, knowing that you're supposed to love yourself as God loves you. Make that choice. Do that thing. Be that person. So what does that look like? Prop up your Bible, read this, meditate on it, and ask yourself, what is God asking me to do, do, to love myself well? I think that'll be a surprising thing. I think that that'll be an interesting thing to ponder. Um, so get back to me if you have insights, just send a DM or something. I'd love to hear what the Lord is telling you today. Um, thanks a lot. If you are um, a Take Up and Read member, we will meet in 20 minutes at 9.30 on Zoom. I sent you the link last night. Um, we're going to talk about Acts 3, and um, I'll see you then. And then I'll see everybody else tomorrow. Bye. Thanks for coming.